It's, it's a fun place to go, too. Oh, I love it. Uh, in connection with the scalar wave thing, have you found that anybody, you know, see, and government seems to ignore the whole thing, yet, in a sense, it seems like this is the strongest type of uh, war activity the Russians are actually waving against us. An undeclared war. Yes, I absolutely agree with you, and I must say I've spent a lot of time in our nation's capital, Washington, talking to senators, congressmen, military people about this, and uh, the general reaction, my God, how come I didn't know about this? And then uh, they check around a little bit, you know, through official channels, and they find out that it's something you're not supposed to talk about, and pretty soon they drop out of it. Hmm. So the general policy of our government is not to let the public know what's going on, because they're, uh, as in the case of the UFO story for the last 40 years, afraid people are going to panic, but that's not true at all. People, you know, are common sense folk, and if somebody says there's a war going on, they say, well, let's uh, put on some armor, let's defend ourselves. And that's all I'm saying, uh, that, you know, it, it is going on, it's possible to defend yourself, and we've now worked out some very simple technologies available to everybody to do this, so that's what the battle is all about. There seems to be a tendency in Washington that only the bushy brains of Washington should deal with the weighty problems of the day. That we the, so sheep, right, that we, the sheep of the United States of America, are to uh, keep ourselves uh, involved in the RTD uh, problems and things like that. No, but just, don't... You know, chew away at the grass and don't give me any trouble, man. <laughs> yeah, they just forget that the combined genius of the American people is rather strong, Absolutely. but they need to include it. On the ELF, you were mentioning that we are also engaging in it against the Russia. Yes, we are. We have uh, giant transmitters in uh, certain places in Australia, in McMurdo Sound in the Antarctic. We have one in South Africa, a couple of others still under construction. So the warfare is going on, and what's bad about it is that uh, wherever the beams go, let's say from the Antarctic to Russia, they cross... Uh, a lot of living things in the way, and every living thing in the path of ELF is affected, whether it's plants, bacteria, sea creatures, for example. I'm sure everybody has noticed in the newspapers for the last seven or eight years that <coughs> dolphins have been beaching themselves, and right. whales, and so on, so on. The reason this is going on, and nobody will admit it, is that these creatures are ultra-sensitive to these uh, ELF warfare signals, the only way they can get away from them is to get out of the water. And, uh, I mean, this is this is what's terrible. Every creature that's alive is being punished by this, I think, very stupid type of warfare. Nobody wins. I have the feeling what you also are saying is that even though the Russians are engaging it, we're probably more stupid to retaliate with the same weapon. The only retaliation against it. You see, right in the very beginning, and I was very active back in the early 70s, uh, 76, 77, in trying to capture the attention of the Western nations, uh, Canada, U.S., the U.N., etc., and uh, nobody would respond because the word went out, you don't talk about this thing. At that time, the reason was very simple. The U.S. was way behind the Soviets. It took them about three years to even begin to catch up. And that policy has remained ever since then. And I think every citizen who is aware of this should look into what is deeply as possible and get on the back of his representative, whether it be in the state or the uh, federal government or Congress, whatever. I think this is a concern to everybody. Well, I get reports, for instance, Andrea, and I know you're familiar with this, uh, particularly here in the Los Angeles area, of those strange signatures in the sky. Yes. Yeah. Uh, of the radio formation of clouds and the square crosshatch cloud yeah. formation. As yeah. you know, nature has always made square clouds. Yeah. But we have square clouds that happen over Los Angeles quite often. It looks quite often they look like they were made by a ruler. Yeah, well, you have one of the great experts uh, in the United States in your area, Dr. Bob Beck. Mm -hmm. And uh, he certainly is aware of everything going on there. He certainly can be an effective guide to the public in terms of, uh, you know, uh, getting the facts before them so something can be done. All right, Roger, does that help you? Yeah, I, I don't... Uh, do you feel that we should disengage ourselves from the waging this ELF on our end? Well, I think uh, any disengagement would be helpful, but, you know, this is war. And yeah. You 
can't get one side or the other to make the first move. Right. We've got to have some kind of diplomatic initiative at the summit. Hopefully and, they'll and talk I about that. that's on the agenda in the coming summit meeting. Well, thank you very much, Doctor. You're welcome. All right, Roger, appreciate your call. My pleasure. Our numbers, if you want to talk to Dr. Andrea Pohovich, let me give them to you again. Los Angeles 520-TALK, T-A-L-K, San Fernando Valley 990. All of the numbers end in TALK. In Orange County 750, Burbank, Glendale, and Pasadena 244-448 in the San Gabriel Valley. It's 679 in the South Bay area and down in Long Beach, San Pedro, Paramount, that area. Your number is 639. And your chance to talk to Andrea Pohovich and to Alan Vaughn on Open Mind on KABC. So Andrea Pohovich. And in studio is Alan Vaughn, and uh, we are talking to uh, Pedro. Hi, Pedro. Ah, good evening, Guillermo. I mean, William. I'm sorry about that. I'm really? Yeah, really, really. Uh, weary. Uh, yeah, I'm in a variety of an open mind program because I read the most fascinating book from Mexico City. It's about what, exactly what you're talking about. It's very controversial. And let me tell you a little bit about the author. Excuse me, author. Of course, part of my English. Uh, this man is a priest, Father Rosario Sanchez Munguia, who was detained by the Mexican government during World War II under orders from the United States because he supported the Axis. Now, this book is very good. This man has tremendous insight. And uh, it's most fascinating. Okay, his whole thesis is on the UFOs. I mean, it's about how the UFOs come out of... Uh, he believes they come out of Tel Aviv in Israel, under there. You know, he had a speech that come from the bottom of the earth, but out of Tel Aviv. He believes that uh, the Zionist Jews, the Friday Spigs, that they get over, they pass over, they take the Christian children, the white children, and they uh, suck the blood, and they drop them back down on the earth. Now, this may be hard to believe. Pedro? Yes? Hold on. I, yeah, I have an open mind, Pedro, but you just, uh, you just right, crossed right. over... I like your name, Andrea, your friend. You might be a bit too out of I'm just being deported for this country. All right, That's Pedro. I got it in for high enough. Okay. Oh, boy. And you know, that happens so very rare. I think maybe that's the first or maybe the second time in eight years yeah, that somebody, that kind of a call has come through. Yeah, that's embarrassing. Well, it's embarrassing for Pedro, I would think. <laughs> uh, well, you know, uh, Andrea, didn't you see a number of UFOs in Israel? Yes, but uh, they weren't gobbling up uh, Christians and all that. Oh, well, yes. <laughs> uh, with a Heil Hitler attached. There. With a little mythology. Yeah. I, I uh, you know, one of the UFO incidents that fascinates me is the time uh, that Isla Zabel, who was with the Wisconsin Society yes. for Psychical Research, was riding with you and Uri in the car through the desert in Israel, yes. seeing these incredible UFO displays, lights flashing all around, and then you picked up some hitchhiker and he hadn't seen a thing. Yeah, that was one of the things we learned early in our observations of uh, real UFOs. When I say real UFOs, I mean extraterrestrial. Because I also believe uh, there are UFOs that are used as military weapons on the planet Earth because they were developed by the Germans, clearly documented in 1944. They were making some good strides at it. They didn't yeah, have the power were, plants, but they certainly had yeah, the air they were doing great things, and the U.S. picked up the technology, and Boeing developed it, and now they're operational, etc. But I'm not talking about that guy. Anybody who knows UFOs can spot those. But the kind we saw in uh, Israel was truly extraterrestrial craft. And I'll give you just one quick example which you briefly alluded to already, uh, Uri and I and Isla Zebra were in the war zone, and what we were doing were using Uri's abilities to distinguish uh, real signals on the radar and certain false signals, and the Israeli military were picking up UFOs on the radar, but they didn't know the signature, and, and Uri is good at that, so he could straighten them out. Anyway, I mean, going back to Tel Aviv, uh, Unfortunately, being in a war zone, we could not carry cameras or any other recording equipment, so we were not able to document what we witnessed subsequently uh, on film. But to make a long story short, we had a uh, staff sergeant driving a command jeep, and we had a colonel sitting beside him who was our escort, and the three of us were sitting in the back of the command jeep. And I looked to the left along, we were the Mitla Pass area, incidentally, and I looked up at a ridge to our left, which was probably five, six hundred feet high, and I saw an incredibly huge UFO, which was very metallic, like anodized aluminum in appearance, 
And I noticed several odd things. First, I guess the mate is probably the length of the 